Hello, hello. I'm not sure who is out there yet. Um, I'm going to give it a few minutes so that those of you who are joining at, at 7 o'clock are able to get onto the call. <clears throat> when you do come on the call, if you can just please grant access to StreamYard so that your name can be displayed. And if you don't want to do that, that's quite all right. Um, hello, Mart. I'm so glad you're back here. You're always so on, the, on, on time and the first to say hello. I really appreciate it. For those of you who are joining, please say hello in the chat. And if you haven't granted StreamYard access, if you can write your name in the chat so that I know who it is that I, is saying hello to me. I love knowing that you're here. And it looks like everyone's jumping on the call pretty quickly tonight, which is great. <laughs> Please type in the chat, hi, and let me know that you're there. And uh, I'll wait for a few more people to join before we get going with this final evening, night number three. That's okay. If you need to do the replay, that's great. If anybody is watching this on the replay, if you can type replay in the chat, and then I'll be able, hello, Nat, I'll be able to see that you've, you've caught up. And if you have any questions that I haven't answered tonight, if you... I'm still keeping the group open um, until at least the 27th of November. And if this is a group that you really enjoying the, the input with, then I'm happy to keep it open for longer. Cindy in Cape Town. Oh, I'm so happy that you're there. Normally in Renana, how is Cape Town? It must be beautiful at this time of year. Hello, Zelda, also joining from South Africa. Wow, you guys are really on the mark tonight. Okay, so I'm not going to keep you waiting because you all were here on time and uh, we're going to dive into so much that I want to get through tonight. I'm going to do my best to keep to my 30 minute schedule. So if you are joining me live for the first time or you're joining for the first time and you haven't watched the previous two evenings, that's okay. You can go back and watch the replay and um, really what I want you to get from this three-day live series, which I'm so grateful that you've you've committed to and you've showed up here, some of you live every single day, that this is really, these are simple tools and they seem so incredibly simple, but they can really make a really big difference in your life. So um, I'd love you, if you can, to still share some pictures of the foods that you're eating and how you've found this process of eating more mindfully, paying attention to the food on your plate. I wanted to share with you something that happened with me this morning. And in fact, the day got away from me and I never managed to actually post the pictures in the group, but I will do it later. I woke up super early and I was so happy that last night I discussed with you how important it is to take a few minutes at the start of your day to assess where you are in your body and what you think your body will need for the rest of the day, depending on what your day schedule is going to look like. And I knew that I was having a really crazy busy day. I had clients booked, I had other meetings, I had to prepare for tonight. And because I'd woken up so early, I thought, right, I need to pace myself, I need to take things slow today, and I need to make sure that I eat a breakfast that is going to sustain me because I know myself well enough that if I am hungry, um, because I haven't slept very well, then I, if I eat something that's not quite going to balance my blood sugar first thing in the morning, then the rest of the day I'm going to be looking for food and snacking. And it actually, when my blood sugar drops, I'm not sure if this happens with any of you either, it actually makes me anxious. So I've got to be super careful of making sure that I don't let my blood sugar level drop like that. Uh, so back to this morning. So I decided I was going to make myself my new favorite oat pancake. Martine, I think you you asked me previously, I posted a picture of it on, on my Facebook um, story, what was in it. So I put eggs, I put oats, whole oats, um, chia seeds, cocoa powder, because it has to be chocolate in flavor for me. And I add maca powder which is an adaptogen, which is specifically to help estrogen levels and hormone levels over the age of, oh, Danny, it's delicious. I'll, I'll share the recipe with you 
So the, this maca powder is very, very supportive of our hormones, specifically over the age of 40. But it doesn't taste so great. That's why the cocoa powder with it is, is really nice. And then I put some honey with it. A little bit of coconut oil in the pan, and it was delicious. And I was present with the meal, and something distracted me. And before I realized it, I was almost finished. And because I got distracted and I hadn't been paying attention, I realized that I'd already probably had two or three mouthfuls too much, and I was starting to feel uncomfortable. So it's always hard for me, and I shared this with you on the first night, that it's always hard for me to leave food on my plate. And I thought, come on, this is what you're teaching everybody online, and this is what you're encouraging your patients and your clients to do. Dig deep, leave what's on your plate. You know you don't want to feel uncomfortable. And if you're really hungry later on, go back and eat it. So I was very proud. I actually took a picture of what I left on my plate. That's why I wanted to post it on the group because I was proud of myself and I wanted to share it with you. And it's, I think, still lying in the kitchen because I hate throwing food away. And I never got back to it because my day ran away. But it was a very good start for me for the day. And I was grateful to have that time and that awareness to pay attention to what my body actually needs. So I'm not sure if any of you were able to implement that part of what I discussed last night. Um, I didn't specifically say that that was an exercise. It was more about avoiding the artificial sweeteners. That was the main exercise from last night. So this is also something that you can really implement in order to be able to feel what your body needs on any given day. And this helps you to listen and learn to trust your body so much more. Okay. Oh, before I forget, um, it is in your email and uh Forgot to mention this on Monday night, but I, I'm sorry, on Tuesday night, on the first night, I did speak about it last night. Please keep up your group participation. I am giving away a 75 shekel voucher to three of the most engaged participants. And Facebook give me stats of who's commenting the most, who's po putting their posts on. I'm also looking at some of you have shared my posts, which I really am grateful for, as well as feedback that I've received personally from you in messages. So all of that I'm taking into account. And tomorrow I will announce the winners of those of those three vouchers, which can be used either towards a consultation with me or towards um, a reduction or to take it off the price of the online program that I'll discuss a little bit more with you later tonight so that you can understand um, how that also works. So why did I feel the need to do this live series, to take the time to offer some ideas for you on how to better nourish your body over 40? What I hear so often from women that I work with, particularly when they first come to, to meet with me or uh, like a, on the first phone call before they even decide that they're going to work with me is that they are feeling out of control. They are frustrated. Their clothes that used to maybe fit them all of a sudden don't fit them anymore and they've picked up weight without having done anything different. And the common denominator is that they are 40 years and older. And some of them have been super good, strict with their eating most of their lives. And if they ever did pick up weight, and we did discuss this in the first two nights, hello, Mayan, hello, Dani. Oh, thank you, Devorah, for all your messages. We discussed this in the first two nights, that the tricks that would work in your 20s and 30s all of a sudden stop working. In fact, over the age of 40, I find that a lot of women all of a sudden start to become a lot more self-aware. It's an amazing thing that we, we start to become more intuitive in many areas of our life, but still struggle with this love-hate relationship with food and our body and the scale. And the more aware we are, sometimes the bigger the frustrations as well, because we finally feel like we can be accountable, like we can, we, we, we accomplished in what we're doing, we've spent however many years working, building maybe businesses or, or 
really improving our skills in so many other areas. Um, I know not all of you are moms on this group or not all of you are married, but for those of you who are moms, we've raised children who are now teenagers or maybe even in their early 20s. These are huge things. And yet we struggle sometimes with emotional eating, triggers, feeling out of control around a food, and it becomes such a challenge. So the for me, what I have started implementing for the last few years with my own relationship with food, and this is what I help my clients with extensively, and those of you who are on the call, I'm not going to call you out, but I had a, an amazing meeting with a client earlier who all of a sudden has just had a switch after more than three years of working together. All of a sudden, the the um, discussions that we've had and the tools that I've encouraged her to use just clicked. And this can be frustrating when you want to see quick results, when you know that you are the type of person who's always wanted to be on a strict diet and doing things perfectly in order to get results. The problem is that life isn't perfect. And when we have such busy lives and so many things that come our way with and throw us off, you know, emotional triggers, stressful things that happen, all of a sudden your mood drops because your hormones have changed. When we use food as a crutch in that situation, we end up fighting with ourselves and then we gain a little bit of weight from it and then we feel even worse and it just becomes a vicious cycle. So if we go back to trying to do the strict dieting that we used in our 20s and 30s and maybe even for some people up until 42, 43, and it just doesn't work anymore. In fact, perhaps it's even making you gain weight. What do you do? How do you approach things? What's the next step? So do you give up or do you try another way? And the other way is what, for me personally, I've decided for myself is the only way to go and what I work with my clients with. So it's about using mindset tools, mindset hacks, having self-awareness, knowing what habits are working for you and understanding what habits need to be implemented, but not huge shifts and changes that are impossible to like from one day to the next that you like a diet would be. One day you're eating pizza and the next day you're eating lettuce. <laughs> I know that's an extreme example, but you know, when we build habits, it takes time. And what works against us is that our brains are wired to stick to the familiar. And this is what we end up fighting with. We end up fighting with ourselves because the thoughts that we think, we tend to repeat. And the only way to change the outcome that we're trying to achieve is by thinking different thoughts. Now, if you are experiencing hormonal shifts and changes and your mood is being affected, it can affect how you think about yourself as well and about life. And that is why nourishing your body and knowing what foods are right for you to choose in order to support your body becomes so important. So the question is, do we eat carbs? Don't we eat carbs? Do we eat high fat? Don't we? Do we do intermittent fasting? And there is some research that over the age of 40, that intermittent fasting is supposed to be beneficial. However, if it causes you stress in your body, which is a big problem over the age of 40, what happens is your body produces higher levels of cortisol. Type in the chat for me if I'm speaking absolute Greek or if you understand what cortisol is, and I'll explain it a little bit more. So I'll go to explain it for those of you who need a little bit more information. Cortisol is the hormone that our body produces in response to stress. And it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. But when we have too much stress and cortisol levels rise, okay, then our body stops recognizing that it is as high as it is. And it causes what we discussed last night, decreased or a gut dysbiosis, this imbalance in the, in the gut with the, the probiotics and the good bacteria that live there. 
which can affect our hunger, it can affect our mood. Cortisol being elevated causes weight gain. So the other problem over the age of 40 with, okay, uh, I'm happy, I'll, uh, hopefully by the time I'm finished explaining it, you'll understand a little bit more. Cortisol is produced by the glands in our body called the adrenal glands. And these are the glands, if you I know the word adrenaline, when you have an adrenaline rush or you are experiencing this fight or flight mode where there is some a danger that comes into your life, which you have to respond to quickly, run away from the danger, and then your body should return to normal. Now, I always relate this example. Those of you who grew up in South Africa, <laughs> maybe those of you who've gone safari, if you were faced in the middle of the Kruger National Park out your car by a lion, you would need to run away because otherwise you would be eaten. So your body produces cortisol and adrenaline so that you can fight and flight and flee away from the danger. And once the danger's over, your body's supposed to return back to normal. The problem is, in our modern day society, the danger is not a lion running after us. It's our work, our kids, our home life, our husbands, our friends, maybe difficult relationships that we're having or relationships that we're having with ourselves. And when, yeah, I'm sure, same feeling on the streets of New York City, any kind of dangerous situation, even here in Israel, you know, with with, for those of you who aren't in Israel, there's always um, these, unfortunately, terror attacks that are happening, and it can happen anywhere at any time, and we just don't know, you know, what to expect. So there's always that underlying stress with life, no matter where you are in the world. And cortisol, which keeps ramping up when we are stressed, not sleeping enough, not feeding ourselves enough, and that's why I wanted to discuss it with the intermittent fasting. If not eating until 12 o'clock in the day causes you stress, it's going to increase your cortisol levels, which is going to cause you to pick up weight over your stomach. So that is why that is not always such a good, um, a good way of eating, although for some people it is beneficial. So the other reason that having a high cortisol over the age of 40 and, and not being able to manage our stress and not eat in a nourishing way to support our body to lower stress. Um, also, there's wonderful breathing tools and techniques that I teach my clients in order to take us out of fight and flight mode and into what we call rest and digest. So there's a whole theory called polyvagal theory, which is beyond the scope of tonight, but that is something else that I teach my clients in order to be able to calm the whole system down. Because when the system is calmer, then our adrenal glands, which over the age of 40, take over the production of estrogen in our body from the ovaries. If we are so... Um, if we are flooded with cortisol all the time and our adrenal glands are just pumping up cortisol, they can't produce estrogen. And that is when hot flashes start happening, worse sleep, brain fog, the weight gain, um, night sweats. For me, sometimes when I know that I'm super stressed, I get itchy skin, joint pain. These are all signs and symptoms of high stress at the same time that your hormone levels are changing. And not everyone always relates it back to the other. So how do we get around this? How do we, at the age of 40 and older, and I noticed that some of you are already on this call, are already past the age of um, menopause and are postmenopausal, and you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, they've got all of this to get through and I'm done with it. But a lot of the tools that I've discussed with you on this call, even if you're over the age of 55 or 56, if you're postmenopausal, you know that um, they're beneficial for you because Eating more mindfully, no matter what age you are, is beneficial. Reducing artificial sweetness from your diet, no matter what age you are, is beneficial. Let me start my slides. Sorry, it's on my computer behind me. So let me add this to the stream so that you can see where I'm at. Okay, so that is a lot of recap and a lot of extra information about what is happening to our body over 40. 
I want to discuss with you now why waiting for Monday or January the 1st or the perfect time to start your diet is keeping you stuck. And maybe I should stop using the word diet because as I discussed with a client of mine earlier, the first three letters of the word diet, which is die, subliminally for our brains is something that we want to avoid. And if we keep saying, I'm on diet, I'm on diet, I want to lose weight. When we think about losing something, it's something we don't want. Who wants to lose anything in life? So the messages we give our brain about dieting equals die <clears throat> and losing equals lose, we're naturally going to get a, um, a rejection of that and a like almost like a child you know, pushing back because the last thing we want to do is have either of those two outcomes. So when we speak about waiting for Monday to eat perfectly or to go on our meal plan and it's Thursday, what do you do from Thursday to Sunday night? I want to know if anyone in the chat experiences this. Knowing that on Monday I'm going to have to be good, restrict my food, maybe if you're in the old mindset, weigh your food, count your calories, weigh yourself. What do you do building up to Monday when you have to start and be good? Please type in the chat. I really want to see what you all experience or go crazy. Yes, binge, eat a lot. Exactly. On what food? What food are you going to eat so much of? Yummy bad food and bad food in the inverted commas. Exactly. So you know how many people come to me for the first time and they admit in their first consultation, I'll say, right, give me an idea of what you eat in a normal day. And they'll go, mm, I'm not so sure. Um, I can't always remember. I go, don't worry. Tell me what you ate yesterday. And they become all sheepish and they say, oh, no, yesterday wasn't a good example. I ate whatever I wanted yesterday because I knew I was coming to you today and I was starting. Oh, I had to start. Have any of you ever experienced that? Gone to a dietitian, a nutritionist, started a new plan and, and like had the last supper the night before. Okay. This is such a reality. And why do we do this? Because we are anticipating restriction. We are anticipating never being able to eat the food that we love again or the food that is considered bad. Why does this keep you stuck? Because how realistic is it for you to stick to a diet? How realistic is it for you to spend more than a certain amount of time? I know some of you said on the, on the call on the other night in the chat, maybe really to be focused, to be focused for a year is unbelievable. To be focused for more than a month at our age is excellent. But 90% of the time, the average st statistics are that people manage to stick to something like this, a new resolution for between two to four weeks. So what happens is you've overindulged before you started. You try everything to have the willpower and motivation to continue only at the end to break it and go back and eat everything again, now feeling that you've self-sabotaged, you're disappointed with yourself. Maybe you lie in bed at night thinking terrible thoughts about yourself, feeling bad about yourself, the whole, all of that. All because you were so, you had these food rules and the messages that you have constantly been hearing over and over again is that dieting is the way to lose weight. And I want to discuss with you tonight that there is another way. There's a way to still enjoy the food that you want to eat, but understand how to nourish your body, understand what foods will be more supportive, and how to incorporate all the food in a diet, not a diet, in a, you see, I'm still stuck in that myself, it slips out, in a lifestyle so that you never have to worry about the perfect time to start eating, the perfect opportunity, because there are always going to be weddings, 
for those of you who are Jewish on the group, bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs and Shabbos comes every single week. For those of you who are not Jewish, maybe you have a family meal every single Sunday. There are always social situations and family times where it is not practical to be restrictive. And if you are in this all or nothing approach, what ends up happening is that you are either all in or you're all out. And all of these feelings come back again and again. And the problem is that to get inspired again, to feel motivated again, to start all over becomes harder and harder. I know that many of you have written to me and said you're so inspired and you're feeling so motivated from the last two days. And I think that's amazing. But you need the tools to know how to keep that going. And that is what I've created this 12-week program for. So I'm going to discuss a little bit more about it for you so that you can understand what it offers. And if any of you are interested in finding out more, um, I will put my Calendly link in the chat and you're more than welcome to book a call with me. I had a call with somebody earlier today to discuss whether it's a good fit for her or not. It may not be for you. There may be other options that I can offer you as well, but this is something that is launching on the 4th of December. I'm going to keep it to quite a small group, um, a maximum of 12 participants so that everyone can get the most benefit out of it. But really, what am I, what am I offering? I'm offering to have for you to finally feel free with food and at peace in your body, to unlearn the dieting message and messages and food rules that are keeping you stuck, that keep you frustrated and hopeless. I'm going to learn to build practical habits that are really easy to implement. The same way that these tools that I gave you over the last two days were simple, it's exactly the same, um, but just to build on it. And you'll be amazed at how something so what seems so basic can actually turn you around. I want you to feel empowered to be able to listen to your body and trust yourself, trust your body again, which is what the mindful eating exercise that we went through on Monday night gave you the, the beginning, the tools to begin to do. This is a holistic way to nourish your body specifically during perimenopause and menopause. And by holistic, I mean that we are dealing with the body, we are dealing with the mind, and we are also dealing with the soul because we cannot leave that component out. So uh, I know I want to move away from this frustration about weight gain, but I also want to take the focus off only wanting to have an outcome of weight loss because when that is the only focus, then we prepare to do very restrictive things. And if we're not seeing the results on the scale, then regardless of whether your energy is better, your mood is better, the brain fog is better, you can get past 12 o'clock in the afternoon without feeling an energy slump. You're not reaching for the snacks at four o'clock in the afternoon. Those internal feelings of making peace with yourself and food and feeling empowered far, excuse the pun, outweighs what your weight is. So how does the program work? The, I will be meeting once a week on a Sunday evening, 7.30 Israel time for an hour. We'll have a topic of the week and then a Q&A group discussion with all the participants. And the replays will be available then 24 hours later. So I'm working on a platform, a teaching platform, where I will also upload um, training videos, which will be over and above the group sessions. Because when I, when I compiled the outline for this course, I, I could, I really, I could teach this for a year. And I need to, I needed to get the most practical tools in place. So if I feel that there's anything extra that you need to understand, I will include those as bonus videos. There will also be a, like a pre-call assessment for you to be able to see where you are with your body that week, with your mind that week, and specifically related to the topic of the week. And then once a month, we'll do a one-on-one -on -one session. So even though it's group work, you'll have a one-on-one -on -one half an hour individual support session with me once a month. So there'll be three of those over the course of the, of the program. 
you will be able to stay connected with me via email and I will answer emails within a 24 hour turnaround time. And I've put my office hours from Monday to Thursdays um, because otherwise Friday getting ready for Shabbat and the weekend is crazy. There's also will be an exclusive Facebook group. So it's not the group that you're in now. I'm going to keep this more for free events and other webinars that I will host. So those who, um, enroll specifically for the course will be in a, in a separate Facebook group and the participants will be like-minded. I'm working with a group of women um, would like to make sure that whoever's enrolled in the program is, is there for the same reasons or similar reasons so that you really can feel the community support because I think that is what we are all seeing in the world far outweighs trying to do something on your own. The benefit of also having the replays of the videos that we do the discussions once a week is, and this is something that I find that clients will come to me, we'll have a discussion, um, I'll give them information, they walk out of the door, I can do this, it's amazing, and the next day they don't remember everything. So this way on the replay, you are able to go back and re-listen to anything that, that you feel you need reminding about. So because this is the first time that I'm opening, opening cart, um, I have got a founder's fee, which is for this time only, of 3,300 shekels if you pay in full. And my cart is going to be open. My sales page was giving a little bit of hassles tonight, so I'm hoping to have it up and running tomorrow morning. So the cart will close on November the 27th. So up until then, I'll be taking um, enrollments. And if you prefer to pay over three payments over three months, then the price does just change. If those of you are on the call or if you have anybody who's interested, if you sign up by close of business on Sunday, I will throw in an extra hour session with me, which will give you a lot more intensive um input of your own situation and that is valued at 450 shekels and if you recommend a friend who also enrolls before the 27th of November if you have referred somebody then you will get a 150 shekel refund or voucher to use on another future program so as I said that for now the the founders fees at 3,300 shekels and from um the next time that I start the program, it will jump up to 4,500. So if you want to get in now, if this is the time for you to start working on all of this, then um, I'll give you more information as well. As soon as the sales page is up and running, there's so much more information than I can ever tell you in half an hour. Uh, but if you do want to chat to me a little bit more about it and see what your options are and perhaps now is not the right time for you, I can guide you on a few next steps. So I'll also put my Calendly link in the chat and you can have a look there to see um, if there are any available open times for you to have a call with me. If for any reason there are no times that suit you, just send me an email. I'll send you my email address as well and we can book another time. So I really want to thank you all for joining me for the last three days. If there are any questions that you have right now for me, um, please feel free to, to type them in the chat. I know we've gone just over half an hour and I, and I want to be very mindful of that and not keep you too long. And if you have any other questions, as I said, the group is going to be open and I will go through all of those and um, and answer those as, as I see them. So I'm just going to wait for a little bit. Thank you so much, everybody. I want you to be grateful for yourselves, for showing up here every night, for those of you who've been live with me every day and those of you who come back and watch this on the replay investing in yourself and having the ability to to take care of you is not selfish all of us are givers in some way or another some of us more than others and they always say you cannot give from an empty or you cannot pour from an empty cup so the, the you've taken the time I want you to continue to use the tools that we've had, that we've discussed over the last two, two days. Continue to put your pictures in the chat. And um, I look forward to presenting many more of these uh, webinars, of these workshops for you in the future. 
So thank you so much all for joining. Thank you for all your beautiful messages in the chat and uh, have a great, great evening. Take care.